Everyday Life with Guards Mares, Chapter 9, Part 2 Honor stood in front of Sparkshower's door, and behind it she could hear the uninhibited sobbing. Lifting up one hoof to knock, she placed the other on the door handle. There was a time for politeness, but now was not that time. Corporal Bound knocked as she pushed down on the handle, swinging the door open inwards. Inside, Sparkshire was sitting on the floor in the middle of the room, leaning over onto her bed with her face in her hooves. Eddie, Specialist. From the bed, the sobbing instantly stopped with a gasp, but she still struggled up to assume parade rest. Honor closed the door behind her and walked up to the despondent Pegasus. Her snout was smeared with mucus and tears, her mane was a complete mess, and it looked like she'd gotten two steps into unzipping her dress down from the back before giving up. Now, it just hung loosely off her shoulders and forelegs. Although she was holding her mouth shut tight, Honor could see her trying to blink back tears, and her breathing was staccato and regular. With another sigh, she sat down in front of her and spread her forehoofs wide to receive her. Carry on. Almost before the words were out of her mouth, Artemis collapsed into Bound's waiting embrace and resumed bawling. Giving her a moment to settle in, she started to gently pat her on the back. The tears showed no sign of stopping anytime soon, so she took a look around the room. The bed stopped blanket at a wet spot from where she buried her face, but it was probably dry underneath. Across from the bed on the writing desk, she spied a hairbrush. Leaning over without losing her distressed specialist, she snagged the hairbrush and slipped her hoof into its strap. From there, it was a matter of slowly maneuvering Spark Shower over so she could whip back the covers and hop up to sit on the bed, before gently transferring the care of her head from on her shoulder to her lap. And now, the waiting game. Holding her head in one hoof, Honorbound used the other to slowly brush her mane, teasing its tangles back into shape. As her curls were tamed, so too did her mood calm. Eventually, with her mane flowing freely, she was no longer crying. At the moment, she was just breathing slowly with a runny nose. There was a tissue box on the nightstand, and Honor leaned over to pluck a hoofful of them out of the dispenser, before proffering them into the waiting hoof of her charge. Lifting her head from the corporal's lap, Sparkshower sat up and took her time to completely clear her nose, even shuffling over and grabbing a few more tissues herself. At last, her tears were done, and her nose was clear. Granted, it was a far cry from being done, but it was a good first step. Honor took the edge of the covers and pulled them back, and Sparkshower slowly clambered up to sit beside her, her wings folded, and head hung low. There was a long wait while she just sat there, staring at the floor. Eventually, she opened her mouth. Is it true? What she said? Some of it, yes. Her lower lip started to quiver, and Honor could sense a coming retreat and more tears, so she put a hoof on Sparkshower's far shoulder, drawing her back to lean on the brown mare's shoulder. The game is... It's real. She could feel Sparkshower shake her head against her. But how? How can... How can colts cheat on the pony that they love like that? Glamour Spirit dropped a lot of knowledge on Artemis in a short time, but it was incomplete. A lot of reasons. Maybe the love is gone. Maybe the relationship is a lie in the beginning. Maybe they're just bored. But it's not just colts. Maris can take partners too. Sparkshower glanced up in surprise. They can? It's about power and money, Sparkshower. Not gender. Takes bits to afford a semi-permanent companion on the side. Oh. There's even married couples here in Canterlot, public figures where both are seen in public more often with their saltine of the month than with each other. There was no response to that. Just more deep, slow breathing. So she carried on. You can probably find a few in your Canterlot match magazine. We never had anything like this in Barry. Now it was Honor's turn to shake her head. Then maybe it's something only the big city ponies get up to. Or maybe even in Barry, there were a few who did it, but they kept it discreet. But here in Canterlap, it's so common that no pony bats an eye at it in public. Sparkshower seemed to press her head more heavily in on her shoulder, so she gave her mane another gentle brush. This isn't always the magical city that it's made out to be. Sparkshower stared straight ahead, and the two mares could see eye to eye in the small mirror that hung on the opposite wall, above the writing desk. I always thought that friendship was magic. On her side, and pulled her close. Maybe it is. But love. Love is something else. She gave her hair another brush stroke. But what about 
about Anonymous? Do you... Do you think that he plays the game? Well, I suppose that depends on what happened earlier tonight. Her mouth hung open, like she couldn't believe what had just happened to her. We went to the theater, saw the musical, and then came back home. Did you talk at all? Not really. We talked a bit on the way there, but he was quiet during the show, and we didn't talk much on the way home either. What did you talk about? The best way to the theater, the stuff in the playbill, the history of the Sardinia, the actors and composers, and after the show, the costumes and the best songs. He said it reminds him of a particular show from his world. Did he talk about himself at all? She shook her head. No. Did he talk about you? Again, she shook her head. No. He never commented on your mane, or your dress, or your tail, or your eyes, or anything like that? She took a moment to think, and licked her lips before answering. Well, when I first went downstairs after getting ready, he asked, are you well set? And I said, yes sir, am I dressed well enough? And then he answered, looks good to me, specialist. I remember he smiled when he said it. She smiled too. But then the smile disappeared in the context of the greater worry. Well, time for the big question. Did he touch you? Sparkshower scrunched up her eyebrows and looked up at Honor like she almost didn't understand the question. Touch me? She started to shake her head and didn't stop. No, no, he never touched me at all. Honor could see tears start to well up in Artemis's eyes again. What does that mean? Reaching out, Honor put her hooves on Artemis's shoulders and tried to give the Pegasus a reassuring smile. Then I think it means that he was a perfect gentle tonight, and didn't think of your evening out together as anything other than him simply going out to the theater with his bodyguard by his side. She sniffled, and a tear escaped to one eye and slowly wound its way down her face. Honor brushed one hoof against her face to wipe it away. Remember, the Royal Engineer doesn't know how our society works. He isn't from Equestria. He isn't even from this world. She shrugged and shook her head at Artemis. Maybe they don't do this on his world. Maybe love really is magic there, and lovers don't cheat on each other like they do here. She lifted her hooves off Spark Shower's shoulders, only to rest them firmly down again, looking her in the eyes. So don't go and listen to what Glamour Spear said about him, because I don't think that he meant your night out like that at all. There was another sniffle. This one, hopefully final. Are you sure? Honor kept her gaze fixed on her eyes. I could be wrong, but I don't think that I am. If it makes you feel better, when I'm on duty tomorrow, if a convenient opportunity arises, I'll discreetly ask him about last night. If... If it's convenient, then sure. And discreet. Corporal Bound nodded and took a deep breath, sitting up straighter she did so. She was far from happy, but at least it looked like the crisis was over. Spark Shower brushed her hoof across her muzzle, wiping away the gunk around her mouth, and then licked her lips. How did you learn about this... the game? Ah. And there was the question that she hoped to avoid. Like an unwelcome guest, Honor could feel sour memories knocking at the back of her mind. The door was firmly shut, but they seeped through the cracks around the frame like a chill wind in the dead of winter. I love some pony. Very much. And I thought that they loved me like I did them. Even though that they could get angry and... I, I mean... I thought it was just something that we had to work through, as lovers do. It was her turn to swallow back a tear. But it turned out that they didn't love me like I thought that they did. And the few bits that I was earning and sharing all with him were going to other mares that he was keeping on the side. Spark Shower's eyes went wide, but at this point she had them scrunched up so much that they were barely back to the normal size. I'm so sorry. Anna removed one of her hooves from her shoulder. Don't be. You didn't make him behave that way. But... But I'm sorry that it happens at all. And Anna removed the other hoof. You didn't make Equestria this way either. She took a deep breath. Just be thankful that you learned about it like this. As a misperception, rather than actually getting hurt. What about Glamour Spear? Does she... Does she know that she's hurting other ponies? 
I'm sure she knows that ponies on the other side sometimes get hurt. But she doesn't think she's doing anything wrong. Honor shrugs. Maybe she isn't. She isn't forcing any pony to do anything. She's not even initiating anything. All she does is just make herself available. Sparkshower listened, but she looked like she was a hundred miles away. Honor pretty quickly figured out where that must be. Is it true that you have a cold friend in Barry? Artemis looked over at the writing desk. There was a candle, a quill, a seal with a stick of wax, a neat stack of blank writing paper, and empty envelopes. But leaning up against the wall, there were a solitary pair of postmark envelopes, their flaps cut open, with letters folded up inside. I write to him every week, but he... He doesn't write back so often. Or so regularly. Weakly, she motioned towards the two open letters. We talked about me taking the VIP assignment the last time I was on leave. He was supposed to come find work here where I was posted to Canterlot. She trailed off. Dealing with one problem had worn the corporal out tonight. She didn't have the energy to deal with another, probably a bigger one, like the trouble a long-distance cult friend could be. All she could do was offer platitudes. Oh, that's not very nice of him. But don't give up. Things could still turn around, and even if things go wrong, the last thing that you're going to want is to be second-guessing whether it was your fault. She got down from the bed, and turned around to face Artemis with a remorseful expression. Believe me, I'm that count specialist. She nodded and gave a weak smile. Yes, Corporal. Honor began for the door, but before she opened it, she looked back over her shoulder at Artemis. She was still staring at her letters. By the way, Spark Shower. She looked up at the Corporal. That was a very mean thing that you called Glamour Spear earlier. She doesn't trot around the streets looking for a quick fix like that, so you should do something about what you said when you're feeling up for it. Spark Shower said nothing, but she watched as Honor left. Closing the Pegasus's door, she made her way to the washroom to get ready for bed. Talks like those aren't always necessarily the easiest things to go through, but they're things that we need whether we do wrong or someone else does wrong. Anyways, let's get on to our cognitive donators. Top donators Dash of Evergreen, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, and Pony Man. Courier Crucii, Strix, Sar630, Narwhals, Delta Omega, RuneSlither9852, Dospo, Ronnie Dragonwolf, Hunter Norman, Austin Rowland, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brethren Mordred, Cerberus, Gulashing Hazar, Ron and Wandering, Ender I63, Random Person Manguy, Easy, Jack Cadge, Starlight Glimmer, Squiddy Boy, David D. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F., Rainbow Dash, Tilka Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Rakal, Mystery CU, Leslie Prickett, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Nissa Rusan, Vizuri, Dyslexic Character Sheets, and Just a Random Boy. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.